These are thermobaric grenades, which were used on civilian cars. Now these are designed for tanks. The horror of what happened if this was set against a car, which we know it was done, is just mind boggling. Explosive garden hoses. These are ordinary hoses that you would find in your garden. Lined up on the ground, AK-47s, rocket launchers, knives and mines. The deadly weapons of destruction carried by Hamas terrorists on the morning of October 7. Using bulldozers to break through fences and travelling in Toyota pickup trucks and motorcycles, hundreds of Hamas fighters swarmed into southern Israel that day. So we've been brought to this military base called Sifrin. It's on the outskirts of Tel Aviv. And the Israeli Defence Forces have put on show some of the equipment that they took. Behind me there are some Toyota pickup trucks which were used to ferry in the terrorists and they have obviously completely destroyed now wreckage. Uh, also a bulldozer as well which was used to power through the fences separating the Gaza Strip. We were shown round by a senior official of the Israeli Defence Forces a huge amount of weaponry which I think specifically the thing that we can take from this is that this was not put together in someone's backyard, to quote him, but this was an operation that was planned meticulously for several months, if not years, beforehand with equipment that was brought in from all over the world. We saw that they came from Russia, from North Korea and from Iran. Uh, there is uh, uh, military grade intelligence put into the, the, an effort here uh, to attack uh, the military compounds to reach the cities, the kibbutzes, and in the end, to see what we've all seen, to massacre Israeli civilians. The mortar shells are created in Iran, homemade TNT, inside uh, the bags because it is not as stable as TNT should be. Those are Iranian-made uh, TNT pounds, that is a lot more stable. The next one is uh, uh, an older Thermobaric uh, uh, RPG-7 rocket. And the last one is the Iranian anti-armor dual liner uh, warhead. We've got rocket launchers here. Uh, we have more anti-personnel rockets here on my right. Um, these instruments are particularly interesting. They are these ones here are apparently charges that are set around concrete fence posts. Explosives are put in here, detonated, and obviously it explodes and it brings down the concrete fence post. These were made in Gaza, apparently workshops in Gaza, the IDF have told us. This was uh, uh, created specifically for our uh, fence poles. You can see that it is uh, manufactured Inside Gaza, it's very simple. It is the strict measurement of the pole itself. You just close it around the pole, you detonate it, and it cuts the pole where it is uh, uh, stationed. This was created specifically to breach our fences. There are hooks in the back. You just need to hang it over the fence, detonate it, Everything here is full of explosive material that once detonate, detonates, just breaks through the fence itself. As well, these were also interesting. These are thermobaric grenades, which according to the Israeli Defense Force guy, um, were used on civilian cars. Now these are designed for tanks. So, and they detonate and they create a fireball of up to 3000 degrees centigrade. So if you can imagine what it's supposed to do with tank, you can really, the horror of what happened if this was set against a car, which we know it was done, is just mind boggling. Once this is thrown inside a room, it incinerates everything inside. We've seen families burned alive. With this device being thrown into the room, they were uh, hiding in. All the rooms that you've seen in Be'eri, Nachaloz, Sufa, all those, were burnt using this device. The effect of this being uh, blown, it raises the temperature upon explosion to 3000 degrees Celsius and it incinerates everything inside the room. This is a manufacturing plant line inside Gaza. Here as well, I mean, this is an example of uh, homemade weaponry as well. Explosive garden hoses, these are ordinary 
hose that you would find in your garden, packed with explosives, a detonator at the end. So I'm holding here a AK-47. This is just one of many that were seized by the Israeli Defence Forces after they went in in the clean-up operation on October the 7th, after the terrorists had breached security fences around southern Israel to get in and carry out their attacks. It's actually remarkably heavy, and this is actually one of the ones that's um, in better condition compared to some of the others. You can see some are actually <clears throat> quite rusty, but this one looks to be fairly new and in, in good condition. This charge here, as you can see from the sticker, is an anti-armor charge. This was created to hurt specifically the uh, Israeli main battle tank, Merkava. It has magnets on the back, so it needs to be attached physically to the tank and then pull out a safety ring to detonate it. This was created, again, specifically for the Israeli battle tank, but we captured dozens of those of civilian uh, cars in the Reim party area. Dozens that were attached to fuel tanks of civilian cars. But since we captured many of those, there is a countermeasure that has been applied to many of the tanks now. A drone made in Gaza and complete with a parts checklist on paper headed with the name of the military wing of Hamas, the al qassam brigades, also recovered. Headbands and flags from both Islamic Jihad and Hamas show the October 7 operation was a joint effort from both terror groups. The type of UAVs that they used during the attack, the ones that were used during the attacks were destroyed either when they exploded inside our bases or when they uh, were uh, demolished by our demolition people because it is full of explosives. This one specifically uh, was uh, retrieved by our forces from inside Gaza. Chillingly, a small Hessian sack labelled rice and intended for humanitarian aid contained something far more deadly. Everything that contained one kilo of rice, but instead of rice, that was to, supposed to feed the population. It contains AK-47, Dragonov, and PK ammunition. Everything that you see here was used during October 7th massacre. It's clear, we're told, that the level of sophistication and the quality of the equipment that was recovered wasn't for some simple security team or a police force. This was equipment that was brought in over many months, if not years, and it was stockpiled deliberately by the terrorists with the intention of one thing, war.